Hey everyone. So today I was going to give you a recap of day two of E3 for Nintendo. And surely there was some exciting things with the Pokken tournament wrapping up, the arms tournament, which by the way, the arms tournament had a fantastic finish. Not nearly as exciting as the Splatoon 2 tournament yesterday, but whatever. We even got a glimpse at the Breath of the Wild DLC today, which was really sweet. You know, th there was some good stuff, but... To me, all of this pales in comparison to what I actually am going to talk about. So I do apologize for not doing the two video promise, the news recap, or even a single video that had a news recap combined with some opinions and feedback for today. Because what I'm about to talk about now, I think, is even more important. And no, it does not actually come from E3. But it deals with the Nintendo Switch and in specific how the Nintendo Switch is going to handle lobbies and maybe what the online app is called. So some folks over at NeoGAF realized or uncovered that the Nintendo operating system on Switch already has implementations for lobbies and the app and all that great stuff. So here's the general breakdown. Here's exactly what NeoGAF user Ethereus said about the Nintendo Switch Online Lounge. By fiddling around with the Switch, it's been discovered that the lobby function is already implemented in the Switch OS, at least to some degree. It seems to be done through a web applet that makes requests to HTTP, basically web-lp1.znc.srv.nintendo.net slash lobby. Looks like the name of the app will be called the Nintendo Switch Online Lounge. And yes, there's actually a typo in the logo right now. Also, the following message was found on the source code of the page. Your room has been created. You can invite friends to the room via the Nintendo Switch Online Lounge app. Some additional strings, pass underscore code, says that it is code for friends to join the room without an invitation, allow underscore friend underscore two underscore join it allows nintendo switch friends to join the room using a code available underscore free you can use the f the pre-release version of the service for free service underscore name nintendo switch online lounge let's underscore invite invite friends and enjoy voice chat while gaming all via your smart device need underscore two underscore play the nintendo switch online lounge app is required to use this feature Send underscore notification, send notification to my smart device, join underscore success, you can use voice chat from the Nintendo Switch online lounge app, and create underscore room underscore access, your room has been created. The logo was extracted from the web lp1.znc.srv.nintendo.net, blah 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 blah, some really long URL that ends up in ico underscore lounge dot svg. Nintendo.net notably is the official domain of the company for uses for their network. As an example, Miiverse.Nintendo.net. It looks like the app is 100% needed for lobbies and chat. They also found a QR code that links to lounge.nintendo.com, but obviously that website is not up yet. So, what does this all mean? The breakdown, getting away from the technical, is that this just confirms that the app is needed for lobbies and chat. That literally nothing you do on your Switch will be able to manage lobbies and voice chat. And that means that, yes, to play online with your friends in a lobby or with voice chat, you have to use the app. Now, we've known for a while the app is needed for voice chat, right? Nintendo has stayed on that company line, and some people were hoping maybe it was just an option, but that's not the case. So, essentially, for those that were hoping that the app wasn't going to be required to make lobbies and do online voice chat, well, your dreams are crushed. It is already implemented on the system in the OS that it cannot handle it. All it does is send requests that are then sent out to the app where the app manages all of the various requests. So, yeah, essentially... The app is called the Nintendo Switch Online Lounge, trademarked. Well, I'll throw up the logo here that has the uh, the Nintendo Switch, the, the typo in it. Uh, again, this was all from, like, this isn't fan-made. This all is verifiable 
uh, and you can find it through the web applet. And obviously the web applet is not something that's supposed to be publicly accessible, but people have found ways to get to the web applet uh, on the Switch for a while now. And that's why, how we people are figuring out, like, oh, there is going to be, like, Oh, you know, the ability to search the internet and have a web browser on the Switch someday because the framework for that's already there because there's already games that use online that are using the online framework to, to make things happen, like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and obviously upcoming ARMS here on Friday. So, long story short, we now know. It's called the Nintendo Switch Online Lounge and you have to use that app for all lobbies and voice chat. Yeah, app is required, folks. I'm sure you can still go on your Switch and just play with random people uh, without being in a lobby, but you won't be able to chat with them. This, you can take this news like you any way you want. I obviously don't view this as good stuff. Uh, it's about what I expected to happen, and it's what I hoped wasn't going to happen. But lobbies and voice chat are handled exclusively through the Nintendo Switch app for your smart device. So if you don't have a smart device, if you use an old flip phone, you would need to upgrade if you plan to use online lobbies and voice chat on the Switch. So even if you pay for the service, you still need a secondary device. See, this is this is why I've had a problem with this approach by Nintendo the whole time. It's not that I don't appreciate taking some of the processing away from the Switch, throwing it on the phone and letting the phone and all that network handle all the processing for this. And even if they can fix the ridiculous way that Splatoon 2 is handling voice chat right now, that's fine, great, whatever. But the fact remains that I pay for an online premium service to use on my Nintendo Switch that requires that I have a secondary device that costs hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. I mean, my iPhone 6S Plus, when the day it came out, was $1,000. So it required, you know, granted, I didn't have to get the $1,000 version, but even the cheapest version was like 600 And I know you can get other smart devices cheaper, but, but whatever. The, the point I'm saying is that it costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have a secondary device, which I realize that like 64% of the United States has, or 68% of the United States has a smart device. But it's still one of those things where I hate the idea I have to have that device to do things on my Switch. You know, there's times I like to leave my phone plugged in upstairs in my bedroom and let it charge. Uh, the fact that I have to do all this stuff through my phone is just another thing that's draining battery on my phone, especially when I'm playing docked mode where my Switch is constantly powered and it makes a lot more sense for my Switch to handle it than that. Now I feel like there's a potential I might have four cords running during voice chat. You know, you have the cord running over to the Switch while I'm docked. I have the cord running into the phone. I have, obviously, the headphone cord running into the dongle for Splatoon 2. And then I have another cord plugged in behind me to power my phone so it doesn't die or have a bunch of battery drain while I play hours upon hours of whatever multiplayer game at that time. And even if it's not a multiplayer game. Say I'm just playing the Breath of the Wild with a bunch of people and like I say with them, not in the same game, but we're just all playing and having fun and we just want to be in a lobby together and chat. It it just seems silly. And the reason that it feels silly, especially for like a voice chat, is because I'm paying for access to this service. But not, if I have to use my phone for it, I could easily use Discord or Skype or any number of programs. Heck, I could just fire up an actual phone call and just bring other people into that phone call for no extra fee. Uh, it's just one of those things that, that, that feels a little off to me. Now, I understand that, you know, the lobbies and all that stuff, that's great. Uh, I'm not even upset at the price of Nintendo's online. I know it's cheap, $20 a year. Not, you know... I. End of the day, I'm going to be biting the bullet and doing what Nintendo wants me to do. Uh, but whatever. We now know what it's called. We know that it is required for lobbies and chat. Uh, we'll see if anything else gets uncovered before the app launches at some point this summer. That's what's crazy. It's supposed to be launching at some point this summer, but we don't know when now. <laughs> you figure it would be something they'd talk about, especially with Splatoon 2 coming, but... I assume it's launching alongside Splatoon 2 since that's the first game to support voice chat. Anyways, folks, this is Nintendo Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime, signing out.